Grand final time. Best of five, ladies and gentlemen. It is the grand final right here. So, a couple of things to say right at the get-go before we're heading into this. First of all, if you haven't heard it yet, Zul is banned. The hero is currently bugged. His jailers are bugged and he can pretty much one-shot people, more or less. So, the hero is currently not allowed in the tournament. The next thing to point out right away is that this is a best of five series. We are in the grand final. So this is a double elimination system. Washed Up made it into the grand final through the winner bracket, whereas the Laubas fan club just took down their opponents in the loser bracket final to uh, go for the rematch because these two teams faced each other already in the winner bracket final where Washed Up was able to secure themselves a 3-1 victory. There's, of course, always a little bit of discussion around it. Hey, is there a winner bracket advantage? And the answer is no. There is a small advantage, so in this case, the uh, uh, team that came through the winner bracket gets first pick and they get map choice for the first map. So that gives them a solid advantage on map number one, but since this is the best of five series, there is no lead in score, for example, that they get. Of course, they also get to play less matches, especially less matches in a row, which is a significant advantage. For example, Lauba's fan club is now playing their 10th map in a row. They had a short break, roughly 15 minutes before we headed into the grand final, but that is definitely a distinct advantage that Wash App has now, that they were able to just relax a little bit, they were able to watch the loser bracket final, also prepare therefore slightly for Lauer's fan club, for draft patterns so that they could execute what they want to ban out, so that's where the advantage comes from. But since this is no best of seven, we don't have a 1-0 or anything like that for either one. So with ETC banned out and Zeratul banned out, we're already jumping straight into our final ban on the first rotation. Carrigan and Rexa are both getting rid of, so that leaves Deathwing open. And here on Dragonshire, Rexa is of course king. He is the king of Dragonshire for a reason. Top lane control always in his hands. Doesn't really change. And now the question again, what is happening with Deathwing? We've actually seen in the previous series between the two teams in the winner bracket final, Deathwing starting to drop down in priority between the two of them. Deathwing was picked actually twice. Twice by Lauer's fan club and lost, interesting enough, both of those games. Was picked once by Washed Up later on as a last pick though and they're actually successful. So the hero is still very, very powerful in uh, following series. Was banned out most of the time. But still, Deathwing gets taken. And so does Greyman. We've seen previously a bit of a reaction by Washed Up to go for Leo and Greyman against Deathwing and that actually really worked well. So now Greyman at least is picked away, so no curse bullet set up to drop the hit point pool of Deathwing quickly. But Swamkota still believes in that and is gonna try and check that out. Okay, so let's have a little bit of a look. We have Jimmy already selected and there's Leo too. So he's going to take out the trash. The genera is always eager to bring in a little bit more fervor to his job here. Jimmy, of course, also super powerful these days and Washed Up loves to play with the hero. A lot of exterminator games that we've seen outside of Battlefield of Eternity even, especially on boss maps, which Dragonshire clearly isn't. So I suspect we're not going to see that there. Tyrell gets banned out for a very simple reason. Washed Up has played with Tyrell in pretty much every single game that they played throughout this tournament. I'm exaggerating slightly, but only slightly, because they first picked that hero so often, it's actually crazy. So this time, Tyrael gets banned out against them, and now for Washed Up, the chance to ban something out as well. And what are we gonna get? I mean, top lane? Yes, Malthael. Malthael gets banned. There is still a solid chance that we actually see something along the lines of maybe, I don't know. I mean, Deathwing can, of course, take the top lane, first of all. But we could also see Chen again. And yeah, we've had a lot of panda action here. But there's still a couple of options open. I mean, yeah. I want to see where the support is on the other hand. It's actually interesting to me personally that supports have been neglected so much in a lot of the recent drafts. And with recent, I mean the last four or five games. Because at the beginning of the tournament, it was such a heavy focus on Ana as a first pick, on Malfurion as an early pick. It's actually interesting that with this lacking ban against Deathwing, the entire dynamic in the draft is shifting to such an extent that supports are now all of a sudden starting to drop off a bit. So Malfurion is still now locked in together with Garrosh. So generally speaking, a pretty solid setup. Johanna on the other side and Karazim. I like this guy. Impeccable hairstyle. That guy knows how to dress. He's fantastic. Yeah, a little bit shiny, just the right amount and yeah. 
I would take fashion advice from that guy. I'm not so really sold on uh, the extent of the beard, but hey, there we go. So, last pick for the first map in this best of five, the grand final. And as I said, we're gonna see a champion crowned, and there's Chen coming straight in. Even more so terrifying just recently, importing the coronavirus straight up from China. So our little Chinese panda bear is already jumping in and just terrifying opponents the entire time. Who says you need to hit them with a club, just cough in their face? That's how you do it. Game number one, Dragon Child, let's jump in. Lauer's fan club against Washed Up. Game on! Dragonshire, the first map, and off we go. Washed up with Hazorps on Junkwet, De Quasa on Leo, Nick on Reyna. We see Banana Age on Karazim, and Masquerade is playing Johanna. And on the right side of the map, Swamp Grotta on Deathwing, Lauber on Garrosh, Lauber's fan club here with Henning on Malfurion, Ty on Greymane playing the bit Bad Wolf. And Copenhagen is playing Chen. So let's get this show on the road. And here we go. Exterminator, level 1 talent, even outside of Battlefield of Eternity, establishing itself more and more as a priority pick over Ace in the Hole since the talent, Ace in the Hole it is, got nerfed in the last patch. By the way, now that I'm thinking about it and I'm looking at it, I mean, I'm talking a little bit shit about the panda and about how he's absolutely terrifying, but Mr. Corona himself over here does nothing else but simply drop his fire breath. If they rename that thing into the virus breath and just paint it green instead of red, then all of a sudden we have a thing on our hands. I mean, look at that. Wow, I didn't even think about this. This is actually scary. Either way, now the attack against Karazim, Banana H. Ooh, that would have been a weird start if he falls here right away. Yeah, bald move by Banana H going that deep. Bald move. So now we got Molten Blood also. It's a level 1 talent for Swam Grotta. Nice also, by the way, the tint here. I absolutely love the vamp, the, the War Master skin and the white tint. Amazing combo for the panda. Masquerade gets a little bit of body block. That help is underway and Masquerade gets out. Yep. And Banana Age is not shying away from helping out over here. One minute mark has already been crossed. That means that the camps are up on the map and both of the teams are going for Siege Giants now. So with them starting to jump straight in for those camps, nobody's really invading anything, so it's a trade, one for one, left side, right side. Rotation towards the Bruiser camp is pretty much instantaneous for both teams. A little bit quicker for the blue team, but not that it's going to make a big difference or anything here. But this is also where Jimmy obviously can excel again, and he is already starting to get the damage in with his Inspire. He does tons of damage right now, 125%. Super, super solid. Leo is still holding the top lane, at least for the time. And in the middle of the map, bit of an aggressive move against Lauber, but Garrosh is walking away from this. Level 4 talents for both, and Deathwing still sitting at the bot lane. Okay. Siege Giants are already down, and so far the blue team is actually doing well with that rotation. There's a couple of heroes already topside trying to deal with the camp. This is obviously always the bruiser dynamic that we have right there, where if you take your opponent's bruiser camp down quickly enough, you can maybe even push against the wall. That could, in theory, be a kill. And it is! Cocktail kill! Okay, and a Dragonite gets taken at the same time too! Oh my god! This is getting a little bit weird. What's happening? The kill against Leo, but then the Dragonite at the top? I mean, he sacrificed himself for a good cause. So off we go. Dragonite comes in again, pushing the lane out, and a bit of an ass kicking there on Grey Mane as he's moving in. But that's a super early Dragonite, that's not going to be able to do too much damage, but the wall opened up is already a big success. And just using the Dragon's Breath to take down the minion waves is already pretty powerful and will make sure that they have to get someone else in action. Look at that icon. Just imagine that icon here with the accumulating flame with just a green tint instead of a red one. And then in calling it accumulating infection and all of a sudden we got a thing here. Guys, I think I'm onto something. I think I am onto something. Great marketing right there. Blizzard, free advice for you. Free advice for you. You can, you can quote me. So, one kill against the kill. First Dragonite is already over. Level 7 talents. A bit quicker in the hands of Washed Up since they obviously did a bit more damage. Did fairly well here. At this point, we got also on uh, level 4 Infernus for Deathwing. And our Deathwing is still sitting bot side. But I actually expected him for a while to go top until we saw the Gen pick in. 
But now that we have level 7 on both, that's again Skyfall, which gets taken here immediately. Okay, Tai is already on the run, but Copenhagen was moving in. The problem is that they're going instead for Garrosh, and he gets dropped. Quick kill against Garrosh, he's already down, so that's a quick elimination. Nick is moving in now too. <laughs> He came, he saw, and he ran away. The French defense from Nick right there. Yeah. <laughs> he realized quickly that it was a pretty bad way to move down to the bottom of the map. It was like, okay, boys, I don't want to really be here. So he gets a bit of an assist, but yeah, moving straight into the Dragon's Maw, quite literally, turned out to be a, a bit of a bad move, but yes, here we go. All right. Baldi is also going for the next camp over here. So our little Bruce Lee is starting to fight up against all of this. And Shaolin Power is going to take those Siege Giants down. Or it's the massive machine gun on the guy next to him. One of the two. I mean, it could be either one, seriously. I, we really don't know what exactly happened there. Up at the top, we know what happened there for sure. The little battle between the two one uh, solo laners ended with a victory for Chen as he took down Leo. The problem is that Leo is respawning pretty quickly, and that's actually experience that the panda is nearly losing out on. He's losing part of the wall. That's already a thing. But thankfully for the fan club and for Chen, Blizzard graced us with those insane experience globes that we definitely needed and that allow now sloppy rotations on the map and moves like this. So, no experience lost for Chen. Both of the teams on level 10 nearly. And that is going to bring us into a position where we can finally see a bit of a big team fight here. Reina's Raiders, bless shield set up, yes. Jojo can now start and lock someone down and maybe even prepare for Leo to drop the Entomb once that we have five versus five fights. Four Deathwing, burn beneath my shadow. That's what we currently get here. And also the triple panda again. No top keg plays in this game. But we have the go for the throat. All right. Top lane gets pressured again. Keep in mind that there's quite a few bruiser cams on the map right now. And for the time being, we have washed up moving down to the bottom of the map to get this one locked in. Interesting enough, both of the supports, by the way, haven't decided on the level 10 just yet. So is it going to be the palm? Is it going to be the seven-sided strike? And what are we getting from Malfurion? can tell you what we're getting from the blue team and that is some pressure at the bot lane. First of all, of course, they want to take the fountain down as quickly as they can and take some of the lane sustain away. But the second goal would be to try and see if they can not maybe even also drop the fort itself and that's some serious damage onto that structure. There's four heroes by now defending it, but that's 50% of the HP gone, which isn't too shabby, especially if you look at the minimap and focus your attention to the mid lane, where exactly the same thing happened. So all the lanes are currently under some pressure. Tranquility has by now been chosen by Malfurion, so he went in for it. And let's go. Up to the top, what do we have? Double Shrine already taken. Big minion wave in the mid lane, by the way, now soaked by Grey Mane as he's trying to prevent some additional damage on the fort. But over here, Jojo, Iron Skin, yes, Masquerade. Moving out. Banana H is here too, ready to help. Okay, and there we go. Oh, Rip Tire, Rip Tire, and. Banana Age is not able to secure the kill yet. Hasn't taken his level 10 yet, which actually lets me to believe that we're going to see Palm here. I mean, if they really thought that that could be a kill, then 7-sided would have been an option together with a Blessed Shield. So since they didn't go for that, I assume it's going to be Palm at the end of the day. And yes, there we have it. Palm gets picked. And now the attack against Lulba. Ooh, the big throw. Yeah, 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 careful. Lauba comes in with a big flip. Yeah, can't get that set up. Uh, Tarzops and his boys are securing the shrine now. Two kills against two. 13 talents in the hands of the blue team. The grand final, ladies and gentlemen. Teams have been playing for the entire season and at the playoffs. And now we are at the final of a double elimination system. Final best of five series. Which team will claim the title? Which team will crown themselves the season two champion? Keep in mind that this is actually also the same teams that we had in uh, Season 1 Finals. And back then, Washed Up was able to win it. So if they win here, they would crown themselves the two-time champion of Division S. Level 13 gave us Unyielding Despair. This is something that you actually see a little bit more often. The full-on drain build on Leoric whenever Deathwing is on the other side of the battle. 
So I would expect him to go completely through with that, through 16 as well. Yeah, since we have no full control over the both of the shines for the blue team, there's always the threat of another Dragon Knight. That's why Garrosh is sitting in the middle and trying to prevent it if everybody, if anybody is able to move in for it. So far that hasn't been the case, but it's always, of course, a possibility. Top side, pressure. That's a really nice setup for Dayquaza now all of a sudden. I mean, just look at this push. He can take the minion wave down, easy peasy, and he might even be able to take the fort down. Panda had to move back. They're defending the bot lane as is, but at the top... The fan club is suffering, and they're suffering a lot. Shen is finally there. The panda is joining the fun, but, I mean, that's a quick drain that gets connected here. And Copenhagen is honestly getting murdered at this point. Copenhagen has nothing. And there's the Entomb. He tries to jump out. Another slow... Oh, he could get the kill here. The drain. And the panda is dead. Okay. Leo... Yes, the unyielding despair. Nicely done. A good value from that. Reptile, but a good indomitable allowed Garrosh to still move through it. Did not get booped back. That was important. Top 4 is obviously down. And now that we're seeing also the gate attacked at the Bridge of Death, that's another problem for the red team that they eventually have to face. But they are just starting to lose out all over the map. It's not a big kill lead or anything that we see for Washed Up, but their rotations are just cleaner and their lanes are just a bit stronger. They go for camp after camp again. And if you watched me cast some of the previous games of Lauber's Fan Club, you might have heard me talk about how they usually go really very diligently across the map to get those camps and to make sure that they get the experience with it. In this case, they are just falling second to Washed Up. Dragonite is taken again. Leo by now with 16 has the crushing hope now too. Pain and Red is in. And they are just murdering here. I mean, Blessed Shield isn't really out, thrown out yet. But Leo can at this point just start to drain the dragon. We have another fort eliminated in the mid lane. So two forts are down, three forts are down. And they are breaking through the bottom of the map 11 minutes into this. With a level 60 talent right now. So uh, they are just easily moving through the bot lane, trying to break at least the wall in an ideal world, put damage onto the keep. The panda is uh, desperately trying to soak some experience in the middle of the map. But this is... Uh, I mean, this is dicey. And also with level 16, we of course have the cleansing touch here for the man with the impeccable hairstyle. Dragon Knight now with three kills to zero. Still lasts for another couple of seconds. It's all about the Dragon's Breath here. Deathwing gets a little bit jealous. Like, I want an axe too. What do I have to do to get an axe? What do I have to do to get an axe? Look at that puny lizard. Where's my axe? Panda with the self kill. But they go for the Dragonite over here. And there's the Entomb. Entomb and Drain. Dequaza maybe a bit too aggressive here. Or maybe not. I mean, damn. That was good damage against Deathwing. Deadwing confirmed. So much for that. Yeah, where's Leo's damage? I actually don't even want to look at it. <laughs> 32,000, what a monster. What a total monster. I mean, he's capitalizing on the drain build now to its fullest extent. He obviously got some free damage against the panda at the top lane the entire time. That old geezer was just going for the bottle. But now with level 16 versus level 16, there's at least even talents. The problem is the two level advantage right now. Okay, top side. That wall has been broken through, and the towers are also taking more and more damage. But the bottom of the map, this is where they really want to make their play, as you can tell. Oh, bold move by Banana Age as he jumps in. Very aggressive here. And they're actually trying to time the camp with the second siege giant camp that they've already taken previously. Double camp, ladies and gentlemen. Four siege giants are better than two. And with this... We have another approach for keep. Despite the fact that they don't hold a talent advantage. Eh, or maybe not. Alright. Just a siege chance then. Fair enough. Fair enough. Whatever. Okay. Dequaza. Pushes the lane out top. They are gonna get 20 so quick. Half a minute until the shrines are active. And they're already 19 and a little bit. Masquerade. They, play, they played slow. For good reason. Panda is taken to the top lane again. And off we go. Lauer's fan club is the team that has to do something here, and currently they're not doing jack shit. I mean, it's tricky. It's so much experience to soak. What are you going to do? Maybe try and force a fight and win it before level 20 is there. Try and deny the Dragonite with good rotations, even though the opponent has a talent advantage over you. 
couple of options of how they could approach it, but it is not going to be easy. And it seems like they're just going to let this one slide. Still, it's 14 minutes in. It's not this, like this is a mainly 22, 25 Dragonite. <laughs> Winions, by the way. Oh, blessed shield, nature's cure. And yes, there we go. Leo takes over. Looks at Johanna and says, you are so useless. Useless mortal. Too stupid to get the Dragonite. Too stupid to channel. Get out of my way. Okay. Dragonite bot lane. 20 talents and buried alive. Weak spot acquired. And let's see if they can get the keep. Talking about getting keeps. Yeah, that's also a problem. So there's actually like two lanes that are heavily pushed now. But the defense is happening at the bottom of the map. And that keep is not looking good. Reptile and yeah, a bit of damage, but more so the zone that is important. The keep is down and they can maybe linger around a little bit more as the top is also taking damage. They're taking all of it. Yes. Five kills against two now. Move through the middle as they are trying, trying to actually set this up. Break through the wall. Dragonite has still 20%, 20 seconds left. Deathwing is pissed. I mean, he's getting spit on by that fake dragon over there. The guy is a battle axe. He doesn't have one. I would be pissed too. I mean, seriously. This is a weak ass raid boss. Look at this shit. He doesn't have nothing. Where's the battle axe? Where's the machine gun? Nothing. A little bit of a fire breath. That's all that he's got. Yeah, that dragon I got that too. And he has a battle axe. I would be jealous as well. Okay. Vision denied. And let's take another look at the damage. <laughs> Fucking John Crash is laughing his ass off the entire time. <laughs> Honestly, we're talking about any kind of like voice uh, or sounds in the game. John Crash is by far the best. These random giggles are just always killing me every single time. Okay, so 34,000 for uh, the panda in damage. Top damage dealer for his team. 37,000 for uh, Junkrat. And let's go. Big push bot lane. <laughs> Have fun defending against that. I honestly thought that they would li like maybe wait for another Dragonite or uh, kind of, I don't know, just take another keep. Far from it. Big push at the bot lane. Just as level 20 is about to come in for the opponent's team. Can they make that happen? They still have the spell aura here. And that shield is falling and it's falling quickly. They have three camps in total that push through with this. Okay. 98% on the core. Yeah. All the drag all the siege strands are pretty much taken down at the same time. 87. Bit of a poke into the middle, but they have to move away now. And there is level 20 for the opponent as well. Shrines are also activating. So now it's even talent fights from here on out. The panda still going straight with the elemental conduit. Titanic might. Rumor has it that when you take titanic might, you can also throw Thrall's mom around. Previously, Thrall uh, Garrosh attempted it once. Spend a year in a wheelchair. Uh, Nick at the top lane. Yeah, pushing the lane out here for now. But there we go. In case you didn't know, Thrall's mom is so fat she can soak all three lanes at once. Oh yeah. Okay. 86% on the core for Lower's fan club. Not a single fort has been eliminated. Not one. Maybe, just maybe, they can win a team fight here and turn things around slowly. It's not really a kill every game, but again, it's a very, very controlled one. And at this point. There's another camp pushing through the top lane, so even more threat towards that keep. And all of the keeps have already taken damage, so that's a problem. But yeah, top side. Copenhagen still sitting in the bush, always playing with vision, hoping for someone to just face check. So far, nobody has done them that little favor. And off we go. Camp is pushing in, bot lane control. The reason why they're sticking at the bot lane this much is because it's the only shrine that they hold. If they lose this one, they're going to be in trouble. So the problem is that while they are trying to hold on to that, this is pushing in at the keep. The panda is already moving back and once that they see Copenhagen, they're going to make the play for it. They're already starting to move out and they quasar once the drain and get some damage on the Deathwing. But there we go. 
They're starting to move into the middle. Panda is still on the defense. Still, the keep takes a serious amount of damage there already as is. And he has to let it go. Keep is getting damaged even more. But the Dragonite would end the game. So he has no other choice. He needs to move into the middle and try and help them out here. Looks like we're going to see an entomb attempt. Nope, not quite. Buried Alive is of course ready. Top keep is still losing hit points as you can see on the minimap. Likely to fall. And indeed it does. Top keep is any second now down. Bam. Two lanes pushing against the red team. They are on the ropes now. They are on the ropes and they are down for the count in just a moment. I mean, this is not a pretty picture for them. They are still playing around the control. This time they sent the panda to the bottom. They sent Garrosh up to the top. And there we go. Bot lane control has been reestablished by Masquerade. Can they go for the hit here? Is that going to be a buried alive? He's moving in. He's thinking about it. But he's not dropping anything. Not yet. They're stealing the cams away instead. Very patient play. They could have tried a couple of times now already to just, just go for it and uh, pull the trigger. But they didn't do it yet. Lauber straight into the steel trap. The Raiders, of course, still granting some vision here. Very, very slow play. Yeah, and up to the top, Junkrat has it. Hazops gets it. Starts to jump over. He's still trying to control both of the entrances here. Mid lane, of course, still being held. But now that we're 20 minutes into the game, these catapults are all of a sudden starting to hurt a little bit. And if they get pushed into the middle and start to attack the keep here, that's another one that's going to fall. So this will be problematic. You can uh, watch the shield fall in just a second. Shield is going to be eliminated and more camps are taken. I mean, washed up is just drowning them in camps. Camps that are pushing across the map. Camps that are doing damage there. And it's starting to become really tricky the longer this game lasts because all of this stuff scales into the late game. Uh, Garrosh, after he did his physiotherapy, after trying to throw Thrall's mom, he's now starting a little bit slower, so he's throwing a couple of minions. I mean, you gotta start somewhere, right? You need to build up that base strength before you can go for some actual targets. But the minions are a very good opportunity to do exactly that. So, yeah, good job by him. I like it, taking it a little bit easy there. It's always the best thing after an injury. Masquerade with the attempt. Apparently Garrosh feels fine. Starts to throw. Starts to taunt. But he dies. Maybe a little bit too much weight after all. That could also be a kill against Henning. The drain at least connected. Leo wants to go in. Connects another drain against Deadwing. And drops it. Deadwing is down. Dragonite is taken. The shields are already gone. And Tanning is on the run. Uh, but the catapults are already about to finish what Washed Up started. Dragonite is moving into and in this grand final best of five series, the blue team Washed Up is taking the 1-0 lead against Lauber's fan club. GG and well played as they lock in the W on Dragonshire. All direct pass! Game number two. The map choice made by Washed Up. They chose the map because Lauber's fan club, since they lost the last game, chose first pick. And of course, first ban. So, with that said, what do we get? Deathwing, by the way, lost again. So this is the third time in a row that Lauber's fan club lost with Deathwing against Washed Up. That's pretty much what's happening here. Which makes the hero an interesting pick for this, because what do you do now? Continue picking Deathwing? Banning him because you can't win with him, but the opponent still does? Or just simply try and shift priorities a little bit? Yeah, first ban. They're <laughs> already hesitating here. <laughs> I mean, the Ana ban against Banana, you're never going wrong with that, I suppose. So that's always a thing. But Abatha would also terrify me a little bit since Hazu plays it quite a lot and the team has played that style several times now. Okay, and the ban goes to Jimmy. They decided to take Jimmy down. All right. With this exterminator style that they lately play. That's, of course, a good one since the map sports two bosses that you can both take with exterminator quite easily. Sneak them in whenever. Game number two in the best of five. I'm a little bit terrified for Lauber's fan club. Again, they've been here for a while. It's one of the biggest advantages of making it through the winner bracket. You play one less best of five series, and believe me, that matters. 
that's another two to three hours where you just sit there, you chill, you relax, you talk with your team about what the opponent does on each map, how they play, if there's a weak spot that you could try and exploit, how you draft. And that's something that the fan club just simply didn't have. So, for now, ETC is banned out. He has Junkrat again, <laughs> yeah. The crazy Australian gets eliminated. Hazu a little bit too strong on it on the last map, so there's that. And let's go. Let's make it happen. Are we gonna get the hit in against Deathwing? I don't think so. I think they're gonna let him through again. It's a bigger map, so you can argue that the hero gets even more value. But right now, if, if they don't pick Deathwing, if I was the fan club, I would already say, hey, boys, it's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> Zarya gets banned out instead. And here we go. Okay. <laughs> I say they don't do it. I say they don't do it anymore. <laughs> I can just imagine how they're sitting there. It's like, Deathwing is open, but we, we, we don't win with him against them. Especially, keep in mind, if they pick Deathwing now first, then uh, Hazo and his boys are picking Leo and uh, Greyman. They did that before and it worked really well, so yeah, there's Vala instead. There it is. Okay. There's that. I would assume that they still pick one of those heroes just on the off chance that we're now going to see a Deathwing pick in the 2-3 rotation. And Ana, by the way, could go no, go for uh, Bana Banana could go for Ana. If he wanted to. We have seen him pick it like exclusively like in previous matches, but still if they wanted to. There's the Abatha pick. Okay, the slugger is in, ladies and gentlemen. It's slugger time. And let's go. There's so much possibility here. Think about Kerrigan with Abatha. Woo! Nick is already sitting there. It's like, please! Don't ban her. But well, we're not there yet. We're still talking picks. We're still talking picks. And Nuborak and Rega. Cocoon against the copy. Okay, what do they ban out now? Can ban the offlane. Medivh is also there. Keep Medivh in mind. I'm not really sure if the fan club really plays Medivh with this. I mean, in theory, you can drop some quarter on Medivh for sure. But if Zarya was banned out, we actually had that a couple of times. I don't think they were going to see Medivh any more for washed up. There's the ban on Deathwing. So at this point, they decide against him. Okay. And let's see. Lucio ban. Yeah, Lucio with Abathar is a pain. Lucio with Abathar is such a pain. He hunts you down. There's no escaping that guy. None at all. Okay. <laughs> and well next two picks are we going to get a carry again I don't really think so but I would love one Chen and Utha I don't really know why the light is always abandoning snowman I mean at this point summer has already started so I guess that's one thing but yeah good old Utha preaching about it also makes him sound like an old drunk so I don't know but yeah, he's just rambling, guys. He is rambling around. This is actually a bit terrifying when you think about Chen with an Abathar head jumping into your team and trying to take you down. With Utha taken here, that's also kind of interesting. There's a lot of stuns coming up. There's Medivh! They pick it after all! Okay, I didn't think they would with this, but yes, they go for Medivh. Swamkarota locks it in. Kopmagen on Dehaka. Solid setup. Good Medivh play here. Can definitely turn the tides in your favor now. And what's the pick for Nick? Divine Shield. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if they don't go for any range damage, they can go for a Kerrigan right now. Divine Shield, Kerrigan with an Abathar hat, and Chen jumping in together with Turl with her. Woo! Woo! I mean, holy hell. Greyman instead, which makes way more sense. But isn't quite as cool. So, Alderac Pass, map number two, and I mean, let's go, guys. Double Greyman, good Abathar copy. Off we go. Second map in the best of five here, the grand final of Division S Europe Season 2. Game number 2. The lead for Washed Up. They are ahead in the best of 5. And now on the left side, Hazwops on the slug. Here we go. Abathar is in the game. Nick on Greymane. Banana H on Uther. 
We currently have Masquerade on Tyriel, Dequaza on Chen, and to the right side of the map, Swam Grotta on Medivh. We're looking at Tyon Vala, Copenhagen on Dehaka, Lauber on Anubarak, and Henning is playing Riga. I mean, there's only one camp on the map outside of the boss camps, for, for each team, obviously. And that's something that Rega is going to focus on, together with probably uh, Vala, who already goes into the arrow build, so that he, she can take down the bosses a little bit faster, even. Chen, currently with the Eye of the Tiger again. And with the Abatha setup that they're running here, they're a little bit more careful initially. Lauer, of course, has by now also, with the Nubarak, an option to jump onto structures a little bit more aggressively. Thanks to the beetles that he's spawning. And that could actually lead to them trying to exploit the factor that with Abatha you can't really defend as easily as with other heroes. I mean, Anubarak is currently up at the top. Lauber has, in this case, gone back to Regeneration Master. In one of the previous games, we've actually seen him at least on level 1 with the beetle talent. Which you don't really see here. But yeah, over there in the middle on the other hand, trying to break through again towards the camp. This is going to be high priority for both teams, as we mentioned in some of the previous games. Generally speaking on the map here, normally you don't really even go for the objective until you hit level 7. Sometimes it even takes teams until level 10 or 9.5 until they make a play for the first prisoner camp. But usually before level 7, you don't really see any moves there whatsoever. So now towards the top side, Lauba and Dequaza are still fighting it out at this point. They're having a bit of an assist for Medivh as he comes in, but that's also true for Abatha, so he can help out with this as well. And in the middle of the map, that's where the camps are going to collide in just a moment. Alright, Uther is starting to float in, so does Nick. Good position for them to take this, and they go for a kill! Oh, <laughs> and they can't get it! Ty gets away, but yeah. Hashtag not even close. That one was clutch. That could have backfired quickly, so didn't really expect that much aggression. But level 4 talents are now in. And in this case, we have also level 4 quickly for the opponent's team. Needle spines in after the pressurized glance. A bit of stacking. Mage armor at this point. Okay. Mage armor after the portal mastery. Ty. Sitting inside the gate, trying to take that down. So far, he can't really. And again, he's incredibly low. And Masquerade gets some assists from Abatha, but they go for the kill against Rega this time. And this one, they lock in without problems. Ty, he's the survival master over there. But just look at that mid lane push. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? Two minutes and 30 seconds in, Medivh is all of a sudden flying in here and saying, like, boys, what the fuck are you doing? And it's like, yeah, we got a bit of a problem. I leave you alone for two minutes and you're already losing the fort. Like, what's happening here? Tyriel, Abatha, and they just drop it. Fort down, and it seems like... Oh, can they escape? There's the flank. Where's the tongue? And... No, no liggity lick right here. Uther might fall, and yes, he does. But then again, Uther is a little bit anyways. Ooh, Masquerade doesn't have any mana left. Yeah, that's potentially a second kill. Uther heals whatever he can, but Tyriel is gonna die. Already positioned himself in the minion wave and just said like, okay, I'm gonna get all of this. Gets the minion wave hit, two deaths, but I still call worth here. I mean, again, they lost two heroes and they were able to take a four down. I'll take that any day of the week. I mean, seriously, that's a fantastic trade this early in the game. Both heroes are already back to business. So this is great. This is absolutely great. Now, the objective, that's a different story, but just look at the discrepancy in experience. There's already level 7 in the hands of Washed Up, and they should be able to actually stop this. Might lose it then at the end of the day, anyways, but still, for now they're stopping it. They go for Ty, the panda, the panda, where's Abathur when you need him? Yeah, there it is, and Ty is already low. Yeah, and they just turn it around here. Damn. Honestly, these Abathur setups for Hazorbs and his boys absolutely nuts. Total bonkers. So now Mule on level 7 is in. Trying to jump in on the left side. So far so good. They're actually chasing it a little bit quicker. Okay. Interesting setup. Now the mid lane is also getting pushed by a camp. They need to stop this. They need to stop this. And there it is. The red team actually claims this. Nobody starts the channel. That was a neat move by the fan club. I like that. That was actually a really cool move. You don't actually have to reclaim your own. You can just simply channel your opponent's camp and both start racing. 
And that's exactly what they did here. So now we have the cavalry or the raiders in favor of, of uh, the fan club. That's a pretty cool move right there. I mean, I'm not quite sure if they didn't realize that or not, but with them just being clustered around the prisoner camp, I really thought that they could just simply have channeled it a little bit and just waited out those three, four seconds, and that would have helped them already to secure it. Anyways, they lost it, so now they have to deal with all of that, which buys time for the fan club. Yeah, off we go. This one is already down, up at the top. Oh 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 oh. That's a kill. Yeah, that dinosaur is extinct again. Down he goes. Down goes the key, uh, the fort in the middle. So at least they get that. Uther also, by the way. Yep, Uther. I mean, he was too much in North America. Uther traveled recently a little bit, so he traveled to an A and was there used as a side laner as in the main tank. And now that he's back in Europe, he is just not used to the European style anymore. He just thinks he's a main tank and he always runs straight into the opponent's teams like, I'm janky. And then he gets focused and then he gets still goes down. I, that's one explanation. I don't know how much he traveled. I mean, depending on where exactly he was. If he ever went to Italy just recently for a decent pizza, then maybe he's just a little bit weak these days for obvious reasons. But I'm pretty sure that at least... I mean, Uther is generally speaking. I mean, he's someone who's prepared, so I'm pretty sure he at least bought a little bit of toilet paper. But for now, two kills against three. Level 10 abilities in for both teams now. Divine Shield, by the way, go for the throat. And on the other side, the Ley Line. Ley Line Seal and Strafe again. 11 stacks for the level 4 on Vala. 32 stacks for Medivh, by the way, baseline. So he's closing in on completing the quest. Uh, Rega already moving through over here. Nick trying to take his camp again. <laughs> there should be a little sign by now, Nick's camp. Every single time it's up, he's immediately jumping in to take that down. Okay, over here. Uh, there we go. Da, 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 da. Camp time. Level 11 on both sides. Pretty even in structures. Yeah, it's a nice game. Oh, 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 oh. It's actually two kills against three. Somehow I really thought that Washed Up was able to get a few more kills in. But yeah, not quite. Okay, Dayquaza is also running around now. And off we go. Nick flying on the little Hearthstone card. That's another thing that you can use when you're running out of toilet paper. <laughs> Useful for something at least. Yeah, top side now. There's still the pressure against the gate. But, yeah, it's all about the next big team fight. And when Abathai is finally deeming to use his copy and also who he's going to copy. Greyman would have be the obvious candidate, but Uther with another stun is also not too bad. He gives you sustain, he gives you stun. That's another option that you have for sure. Double Panda isn't something to sneeze at either. I mean, these days you should actually not sneeze at anything outside of your elbow, but just saying. So, Masquerade. Rushing away as they are poking a bit more. Especially Greyman, of course, tries to get a couple of those attacks in. Dequaza is on the run, gets the shield, and over here it's just still a poke war. Poke a little bit, and Lauba, the bug report is not in yet, or is it? They're going straight in for the beetle, and it's time to annihilate the cockroach here. Isolation actually missed, the sanctification didn't, quest completed on Medivh, and the ley line. Pretty much destroying all the sanct value or most of it, but the bug has been reported and solved. One bug down, and now they can go for the prisoner camp all the way at the right side. Okay. Rumor has it, by the way, that these cavalry members were uh, imprisoned because they stockpiled toilet paper. Stock bought it at the supermarket and tried to hide it to other people, and they should be imprisoned. I am still a fan of public flogging. But imprisonment there is totally cool with me too. So, now that all of this happens, there's the next fight in. The camp's still on 20 seconds. Oh, the damage and the kill. They hark are down, but look at the blue team. Everybody on the run. Masquerade. <laughs> he just barely gets away. And we are eight seconds out of the blue team claiming an objective for themselves here. Ooh, boy. 13 talents are in, which gives us the Soma transference. Okay. Bottom of the map, Abatha, slabity slap slap, can take deal with all of this. Yeah, Toxic Nest's already in, so he pushes that out. Easy peasy. And all the way up at the top, they need to reclaim this one. 
need to try and get this done, but let's have a bit of a look. At this point, yeah, the channel is there. 17 seconds against 8 seconds right now. Portal allows them to easily move away of it for, of course. Okay, so, here we go. Bala is already on the run, and for good reason. Medivh is sniffing everything out. Just like, fly like an eagle. And they're like, dude, can't you do anything about it? It's like, are you crazy? I'm not going to go up against that mad panda. Have you seen that panda? And there we go. Cavalry time. Cavalry time. They win the second objective. And they already start to push the mid lane even more. Yeah. Bottom of the map gets pushed continuously. And that's already preparing, of course, for uh, the cavalry that's now moving in. I'm pretty sure we're going to see a fight there eventually. Level ahead. Level lead for washed up. And in uh, damage... Greymane on 33,000. Abathon 24. Nearly on the same amount of damage as we see Vala hold currently. Here comes the setup. Panda comes in. And they go for Ty. But they can't get the kill here. The Ancestral keeping Henning in play. As they are all starting to jump straight in. There's a quick strafe. The Sanctification on the ground. This time no ley line. Top and bottom forward are getting attacked here as Medivh is attempting to buy the team a little bit more time and set all of this up. The isolation on Uther is slowing him down a bit, but Banana Age is still able to get out. Or is he? The portal cuts his path of retreat for just a second. Banana Age low, but he gets the assist of Abatha, and they are still fine. Top fort has fallen, bottom fort will fall soon, and they are trying to go for the bug again. They can't take the beetle down, but they take the wall completely. And at the bottom of the map, as already highlighted, this one is going to fall eventually as well. I mean, there's a double minion wave in right now as we speak. Another one coming through too. But Abatha is already doing his thing. And the rest of the team is jumping in to help out. Top side has also been attacked. And this is a lot of ground lost to Lauba's fan club right now. They're losing a fair amount here. The dive again, as everybody on the red team is trying to scramble to get a kill. The drag doesn't connect. Lickety lick lick, good old Dehaka, not able to connect the tongue here. And with this, we have level 16 for washed up. Benediction is now part of this. And what else do we get? Burning Halo, the combo strikes. Ah, the attempt to go for Masquerade again. I'm a little bit curious to see what uh, Abathar is going to get. Usually, we have the adrenaline boost in there. But, there we go. <laughs> The drag, the stun, and a dead Tyrael. Yeah, time to say goodbye, my friend. Top lane gets still pushed, but now it's time for a boss. Greymane is attempting to do the same thing, I assume. They're actually a bit late on that rotation, but they should still be able to get something done, at least when they are using Abathur for all of this. So Greymane just chunking away here. The panda is underway too. Uther is still pushing the mid lane, I might add. So they can actually just like take turns soaking the damage but yep boss at the bot lane is going to destroy that forward boss at the top is going to be taken by them eventually the rotation of the fan club doesn't even head this way and banana h is coming now into all right let's go tunneling claws manticore is also in and we have the stable portal on top of it together with epic enter because it allows you to epically enter the opponent's backline Somehow, uh, someone should deal with that. I mean, Abathur can maybe slap it a little bit when nobody's looking. Ah, Greymane is already here. My bad. Didn't see him on the minimap. Greymane rotated in to take it down. That's, of course, the perfect hero for that duty. But, yeah, the next objective is up as well. So, we can fight over the next set of cavalry or raiders again. That's what they should do here. Vala has completed a level 4 quest already a while ago, so that's great for her. I mean, pretty much every single quest talent that we have in the mix has been completed. There we go, he's starting to move in on the right side. Top lane had to be defended, which is exactly why Vala is currently sitting here. So that's already some damage on the keep. As the game continues, they're starting to lose more ground. They need kills, and they're trying to get one against the panda, and he goes down. Panda elimination right there. Peter is not going to be happy. And now that they go for Uther, that's another big kill. So that's two kills, actually. And as much as Abatha is pushing these lanes out and is helping the team to take map control, they are starting to really take a lot of damage in these situations after they lose a hero. Because right now, the fan club is looking at this and they're saying, like, you know what, why the hell would we just go for the objective? Screw the objective, we go straight up for the keep. Or take at least the wall down. So the wall is already eliminated before anything else happens. Now they can rotate down to the objective and try to fight for that one too. 
They nearly are locking in another kill against Masquerade. I want to go for those stuns. But yeah, 22 seconds and 11 seconds still needed. Abatha is switching between his lanes as the Haka takes to the top to use the global ability to push the lane out. But yes, let's go. Hazo Hops, get all of those locusts in. 19! The experience is also looking good for them, but they're behind in kills now. And unless they really make the rotation right now, they will lose out on the objective. And I don't really think that they want to suffer the consequences of that. So they're starting to go in. Tyrael already jumping in. Yeah, has his symbiote hat that helps him to survive a little bit more. 15 seconds left, that's not a lot. The panda waiting for the ult, and here we go. Triple panda action, Banana H with the channel, he gets it. And they are chasing them away in the attempt to now take down the Arca. Maybe even claim level 20 in the process, and then snowball this harder. 19 against 18. And off we go. Already... Noob Ruck dancing around this again. It's all about the experience. And Abathur is trying to grab it. Abathur is at the bot lane. Experience, experience, experience. As much as he can get. But he has to help out the team too. Nearly level 20. Mana Mule is getting dropped as well. They don't have the Storm Talents yet. They are close. They're really close. The channel as Banana H is trying to buy a little bit more time. Four seconds. Three seconds. Sanctification. They sank the channel. Yes, sanctification for the channel. And now, here's the 20 talent. Triple Panda with the ele uh, ele ele <laughs> Elemental Conduit. <laughs> Redemption and Hive Mind. <laughs> they sank the channel. I mean, Deep is just flying there. They need to be careful. If he sneaks that in, then uh, that's, of course, a grab. But off we go. That's the potential fight. As long as Medivh is sitting in the back, I would be a bit careful with it. But off we go. Divine Shield is ready. They can't really wait for the opponent to hit 20. Oh oh, oh oh, oh oh. Team, team, team. The Haka is starting to move in, but that also means that there are only four heroes that could possibly defend the prisoner camp. That is, again, problematic, and that hurts. That is a lot of damage. The Haka or no the Haka, that doesn't even matter. Yeah, and they're going for the channel again. There's the interrupt once, twice. Oh, the kill! <laughs> that ragdoll, get fucked! <laughs> Damn! Double stun thanks to Benediction and Banana Age is just sitting there patting himself on the shoulder. And he's like, timing baby, timing. That ragdoll got kicked across the entire map. That's how much they hate going up against Medivh. And who can blame them? What a setup! And 20 or no 20, this looks like another objective for washed up. Bam! 52,000 damage for Greymane, 48,000 for Vala. And it seems like they're gonna grab it, aren't they? 15 seconds. Uh, 10 seconds. Ooh, there's no way. Without Medivh, they're not going for it. I thought maybe they're trying to sneak something in on the left side, but... Uh -uh. Uh -uh. There we have it. Raiders, ladies and gentlemen. Back on the map. Uh, cavalry. Cavalry. There we go. Cavalry on the map. That's what we're going to go for. Are they going to push through the top? Through the bottom as well. And off we go. So there's the opportunity right now to make at least the base bleed. It's gonna... Top keep is down. This is down, yeah. Abyssa takes it with a symbiote. So now you, of course, want to take at least one of the remaining ones. Maybe even push this a little bit farther. But here we go. Everybody's starting to jump in immediately. The portals allow the red team to move away. Of course, the cavalry at the top is gonna go straight up for the core. Over here, damage is in. Copenhagen, careful, needs to use the essence. He was low. Cocoon delays everything, but not for too long. And Medivh cheats, that might be true, but they're still fine. Isolation, contagion, everyone moving around, and there it is. The keep is down, and the sanctification saved the play, and now they can go for the bottom of the map. And once that they take the bot keep down, the game's over. Abathur alone is going to win this. All they need to do, if they don't win the fight here, is just play it slow, play it safe, let Abathur push and go for objectives. All they need to do, but they're all already losing way too much ground. I mean, that core is pretty much dead, and this is game washed up with a 2 0 lead in the best of five grand final here in Division S Europe. GG, and well played.
Here we go! Cursed Hollow is the map and there's a 2-0 lead now that we currently have, which is honestly pretty insane here. It's a very, very nice setup that we had so far from them. Uh, from Washed Up in particular. I mean, they're just playing incredibly well. The macro game alone was already fantastic. Also, a little bit of a shout out to Ditze. Apparently, he just became a dad and has a daughter named Johanna. So maybe we get a little bit of JoJo play in this game as well. But congratulations on this part once again. Ah, uh, but Johanna gets banned. They already know that she's just too strong. She's too powerful, too strong-willed. So they are already making sure that she's not playing in this particular game. But yeah, bright future already. Already S tier. Johanna is already S tier. It already happened. So... <laughs> now that we're heading into Curse Tolo, we have ETC banned out too. Frontline gets attacked by both of the teams. And the question... I mean, there's a couple of questions. One question is Deathwing. Abatha. Again, good Abatha map, ladies. So, there could be another one that they can actually go for. And let's see if that happens. I, I think they're banning it out. I honestly think they're banning Abatha out now. <laughs> I would get rid of the slugger. Deathwing! Do they actually pick Abatha? The fan club could do that. They played a lot of Abatha together with Zara Tool and used Tai then to just wreak havoc in the opponent's backline with the help of Abatha. So that's definitely something that could work out here. But we're not quite... I mean, okay, let's not jump ahead of ourselves, but that's an option, something that we definitely have to think about right now. Okay, so let's see. We currently have Garrosh banned out. A massive focus on the front line. I mean, seriously. ETC, Garrosh, and Johanna banned. And we're just through the first ban phase. So that is rough going here. But there's a lot on the line now, of course. Because this is the last map in this best of five series. Crowning yourself the champion. Yes or no, that's the question. There's also a fair share of the prize money that you're going to lock in if you win this one. Tyriel gets... Immediately chosen as the first pick from Lauber. Also picking it away a bit from uh, Washed Up in the previous drafts. I already talked a bit about how they love to take it early. So uh, now Washed Up has been denied the Tyrael pick. And with the heavy focus on bans on the front line, they have a few less options here. Still enough to pick off. You can still go for Diablo, which especially Masquerade has played multiple times on this map in particular, by the way. Uh, and here comes Jimmy. Jimmy and Lucio. So since he was banned on the third spot a few times, this time they lock it in. On this map, there's a lot of wall slide opportunities that they could use too. Oh boy. Zarya, not banned and taken. Tyrell, uh, Tyrell Zarya, and Vala. Shields galore. Shields, shields, shields. Shields everywhere. And let's go. Hmm... <laughs> yeah, on the ban side, what do you ban out now? You can try and ban some stuff out of the offlane, maybe? Support, yeah. Anna is still up, but still, in this case, not really a problem, I guess. Malfurion is banned out instead, okay. And what is the fan club banning? Abatha is up, could be banned. You could ban another tank to limit the options even more. Nick is also still someone... He doesn't have to play Reyna. He can give Reyna over to Hazorbs and go for something else and play super aggressive. I don't think Carrigan necessarily fits the, the bill here for them. They ban a Nubarak. They ban a frontline even more. So, are we going to see Diablo here? If you go into any kind of apocalypse setup, then of course you still have considered as Tyrion on the other side has a sanctification. Theoretically speaking, we should still see also a Medivh pick from them. That would work too. Then you have Lucio plus Medivh and you have the safety for Jimmy. Could then pick also Diablo for Leyline into Apocalypse, which they actually think... I, did they play it once? There, yeah, there's Dibbles. Dibbles is in. And we have Dehaka for a bit more global value. And Hazo is going to be the X-Factor. Unless he's the one switching over to Reyna, he is the one who can theoretically now pick Medivh in the setup. Yeah, that would work. Diablo had a couple of other options too, or Masquerade had. I mean, Melganus is still open. You could have gone for Muradin, for example, just to name two. Blaze main tank if it comes to that, but yeah. Uh... Rega and Malthael. 
Okay. The setup is ready. Hazu, what are we gonna go for? What is he going to grab right now? The moment of truth. Theoretically, it could be the last map in this tournament. Unless the fan club steps it up. Hazu Ops. Illidan! <laughs> what? Whatever I expected, I didn't expect this. Nick on Illidan, ladies and gentlemen, let's check it out. Cursed Hollow, the third map in the best of five series. Oh boy, this is gonna get wild. I did not see the Illidan pick coming. Not even a little bit. Is this the beginning of another reverse sweep or will they close it out with a 3-0 victory? On the left side of Cursed Hollow, in game number 3, Hazuobs on Reyna, we have Nick on Illidan. Feel the hatred of 10,000 Storm League games. Dequaza on the Haka, Banana H on Lucio, Masquerade on Diablo. The fan club. On the right side of the map, in red, with Zarya once again, Swam Grotta playing the hero with Henning on Rega, well. Kopenhagen on Malthale, Lauba on Tyriel, and Tai is playing his Vala again. So, let's jump straight in and see who takes it. First of all, Illidan is already on the run. Gets focused by four, pretty much. So, there's the four man setup that is trying to break through the wall. Someone else has to start to move in and help them out here. Again, Exterminator as a level 1 talent, by the way. It's gonna be interesting what he picks on level 10. We've seen a lot of metamorphosis for the few Illidan players that we've seen lately, but of course you can go for the hunt, especially if your idea is that you are setting some kind of insta-kill up against someone, and that could happen. So Illidan would then also have a bit more of a pseudo-global, but I kinda don't really think that the hunt is gonna be the play here because they already have the Haka, so they don't necessarily have a need of another global for that mobility, especially with enhanced agility even taken for even more of that. Uh, Lucio also booping that back in. That's a good wall stun from Dibbles. Uh, getting some serious damage in on this. I mean, damn, what the hell? That's a kill against Vala, instant. Damn. Nice prep also from Banana H. Yeah, he definitely learned a little bit from Ixius Lucio. I gotta tell you that much. He pretty much prepared the entire kill for them. Illidan with the bad at assault as the level 1 talent for him. But that was a pretty impressive display of coordination that they had up here at the top. And very nicely done by, uh, by Lucio in particular. So good job by Banana Age here. So now that we're going for the objective again. Well, the early objective, mercenary camps. Mercenary camps are always the early objective before we're actually seeing the map objective itself spawn. But this camp should actually... I mean, normally it's taken later. Okay, they move away from it, so they just creep it. I was for a second a bit confused, since in their case, it hold, still holds true that their camp is going to get more value because the first tree put spawns down here at the bottom of the map. And therefore, you don't want to take this camp right away. You want to force the opponent into a position where they have to make a decision whether they want to de-push the camp and defend their top lane, or if they want to five-man the tribute. So, keep, creeping it now makes sense. But you want to take it a little bit later. And yeah, they delay it slightly. But they still have the grab right here. Over here, there's also another one taken from uh, Sylvan uh, Sylvanas. From Bala. Yeah, our little cowgirl is already ready for all of this. Big push in the middle of the map. Uh, Bruiser Camp he hasn't taken just yet. Uh, okay, so. In the middle. Here comes the Haka. Looking for the drag. And misses it. Yeah, kind of unfortunate. Illidan is still sitting topside, but the Haka is going to take over in just a few moments. So Illidan likely going to rotate down to the bottom of the map. Gets a bit of extra damage in against Malthale, I suppose. But eventually he's going to make the move bot side. And honestly, Illidan couldn't be any cooler if he tried. But the one thing that makes it happen is the money pick. So Nick definitely with the best mount here. It has to be said again. Even if it wouldn't give you an additional 10% movement speed and hit points, it would still be the coolest mount in the game. Nick already starting to move in. The Haka is coming in too. And off we go. Yeah, Illidan loves to chase. He loves to chase. And they are taking Rega down. The little doggy is dead. And that's the second kill for them. Illidan loves once the map is a bit more open, once that the forts are down, once that a couple of these keeps are maybe even eliminated. But the more space he has to chase, the better for sure. And Lauba is in trouble now too. 
gets immediately attacked here and with Lucio already chasing him, even with shields, there's absolutely no way for him to survive all of this. He's gonna die eventually. So yeah, <laughs> there's already the quick spray and that's the third kill. Level 7 versus level 7, 3 kills against 0, but I don't know guys. This is getting kinda... kinda scary. It's even experience, so let's not forget about this. But the kill count, that's a different story. And all the momentum that we've seen so far has been in the hands of Washed Up. And now that we are 4 minutes and 20 seconds in, we will see them soon move towards the boss. Because at the 5 minute mark, this one is going to spawn. And then Exterminator. And not only Exterminator, by the way. Feel the Heat and in particular Monster Hunter are going to become quite powerful. So both teams will likely make plays for their boss and try and take that. Camps already eliminated. Now in the middle of the map. Uh, not camps. Camps are helped to push through the middle of the map and eliminate a couple of the towers. There we go. And off we go. Yeah, so... Kill. Yeah, sorry guys, like a couple of like mumble jumbles here. Please bear with me. I mean, yesterday was a 12 hour cast, today is already 9 hours in straight, so at some point getting a little bit tired over here, so occasional blunders are hopefully forgiven. Uh, here we go, starting to go for Copenhagen, Banana H sliding around again, and so far they haven't seen a kill. Illidan is still sitting down here trying to get a bit of experience for them, I doubt that they will get level 10. Uh, Copenhagen does not get interrupted. Oh, but Nick can jump in and can do exactly that. Now, of course, Illidan needs to be a bit careful, but he's starting to take down Malthael. Has to jump out here, and instead it's the kill against Terrier that they get. Oh my god. Four kills against zero. Swam Grotta is not getting the channel either. They're starting to chase them down. That's... Oh, too fast, too furious, baby. With Lucio in particular, they're just running all over them. Five kills against zero. Level 10, any second, and the second tribute is in their hands. And they are where? Exactly right at the boss spot. I'm a little bit confused that they don't go for it immediately with level 10 abilities. But hey, okay, there we go. Starting to move in right now. And the red team is gonna have to let that happen. I mean, what are they gonna do? Fight? You kidding me? They can't fight. Yeah, they have five versus five, but level 10 abilities are there. There's the drag, and Zarya gets attacked immediately. Illidan is already starting to chase her down, and that's another kill against Svamgrotta. Everybody is just gathered up in the corner, and that apocalypse did damage. Hurt and zoned them out a little bit. Banana H on the other hand gets killed by Ty. Nicely done. Martha is down too. But everybody is low on the blue team side. So despite the fact that they were just able to get a couple of good kills in. They're still rather low. But Illidan is chasing. And Nick is not easily stopped here. We gotta give some credit to the fan club though. They at least prevented them from taking the boss. And that is worth a lot. Now it's level 10 versus level 10. As expected Illidan went into the metamorphosis. And they go for the curse. They already go for the curse, but the blue team will have to deal with the boss topside. They know they can't take it right now. So the team is cursed, but the boss is going to be taken in just a few seconds. The bot lane pressure, on the other hand, will definitely yield some results here. Illidan is going to make sure that he's going to get this particular fort. And the experience, of course, too. The rest of the team is starting to move out onto the lanes a little bit. You're trying to at least soak on two lanes, if not three. It's oftentimes a problem for you in terms of experience if you don't spread out on the map and you try to five man for example. Uh, in this case the camp is taken. They're actually chasing them. Masquerade might be in a little bit of trouble. Sound barrier not used. No cooldown. Couldn't use it. And he loses all the souls. It's back in just a second though. Top lane has been abandoned. They're going down for the bottom of the map. Guys this is a four versus five. It's a four versus five, and they're still fighting it. Illidan with a metamorphosis. Nick tries to get away, and he gets dropped too. For some reason, Washed Up is brain farting through that battle a little bit. They literally move Dehaka and also Illidan back into the fight after they could have tried to escape here. So this curse did... I mean, there is some professional analysis and terminology that we have for it, but in professional circles we call uh, that the curse did jack shit. So, he did absolutely nothing. Took the bot fort down, maybe, if you want to count that. But the top fort has been eliminated, too. And that was... That was pretty meh. 
that was pretty... Like, I don't know. So, let's see. The fan club is definitely back in this. We had seven kills against one and had a curse and they just decided to greed a little bit for the camp on the right side and then sacrifice the heroes. Now we have Reyna also eliminated. They didn't go for the counter boss either. Banana Age is still sticking around down here. I don't really know what they're doing at this point, but it's not really a smart play. And that's another kill. Uh, like, what? <laughs> yeah, choo-choo, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, they're pretty much my thoughts. Exactly. Okay, so another fort gets eliminated in the middle of the map, but it seems that Washed Up is looking at the series and is saying like, guys, come on. We can't take them down with a 3-0. It can't happen. Let's give him a map. Let's give him a single map. I mean, yeah. Bot lane pressure is already happening now, thanks to the boss and the team in red. They have taken the experience lead now. It might be only a small one, but it's there. Jimmy should have no problems taking the boss down with Exterminator. But from a game that looked like it was dominated and clearly in the hands of Washed Up, it turned now into a more or less even match. So, seven kills to six. And yeah, all of a sudden it's dead even in experience. Well, not quite. Bit of a lead for the red team. But let's see how this is going to pan out now. I mean, Illidan is going to get his wish granted at the end of the late game, but it's a bit of an awkward situation, to say the least. Okay, Tribute is going to spawn. Gets channeled right away. It's going to be an easy one. First Tribute, not a problem. Not really a big deal. 26,000 damage by Jimmy. 25,000 by Malthael. Alright. And what else? They're starting to move through the middle right now with the help of the Aura. Lucio is trying to get something done here at the middle. Moves in at the side, trying to zone them out a little bit. Yeah. But Illidan is also still sitting tight. I mean, they're pretty much just trying to bait them. Lucio is just sitting there and is like, Yoo-hoo, I'm here. Kill me. But nobody goes for it, so Illidan and Deaka can't really do anything. This time, the last rides didn't do anything either. Two stacks only for him thus far. Expulsion zone is through. And they're waiting for level 16 now. Next tribute on the map. 19 stacks on Tai Svala for the arrow quest. Meaning one additional stack and he is done with it. It's going to be a big power spike for him too. And off we go. A little bit more poke is happening. Yeah, still the old ruins. But they have to let this one slide. You don't have level 16 talents. You're not going to make anything happen here. I mean, Lucio seems like he's attempting to interrupt this a bit more. But I don't really think that's going to be worth it. I would be careful. That backfired against you earlier. Not sure if you should take and make the same play again. 16 talents already. Vala has Mantico by now. And the elongated tongue with a pain dem rat. Illidan has gone into the nimble defender on level 13. Very heavily specking into the sweeping strike in most of the cases. Yeah, and Tyrael comes in, tries to steal it away. Can't, double stun into the wall, and Lauba with a sanctification at 90 HP. But it gets dropped by the Apocalypse. The fight isn't over quite yet, but oh boy, that was not a good start. Diablo is trying to somehow angle in, but he does nothing else but run from the left to the right and right to the left. Masquerade is waiting for the stun, finds it. They go for heading, triple kill, quad kill. And all of a sudden, washed up is going straight in for the kill again straight in for the juggler what the hell is happening here they were lulling around for five minutes and at some point they just said okay guys i think we should probably end it now go in kill the opponent next to the keep go for the keep right away and move to the core you gotta be fucking with me right <laughs> i mean it was all a ruse it was all part of the master plan ladies it was all planned Make them believe that they have us and then just turn it in one fell swoop. Big team fight victory. And this, ladies and gentlemen, looks like it's game. A 3-0 win for Washed Up as they crown themselves the champions of Season 2 of Division S Europe. GG and well played. Hey everybody, thank you very much for watching the video today. I hope you guys had some fun with the coverage here. If you want to support me and my work, you can do so now for absolutely free, thanks to your continued partnership with Ray throughout the entire month of March. 
And I would really appreciate if you could just take a couple of minutes, jump down in the YouTube description, check the link out, download the game and play through the 20 second tutorial that ends with the dragon fight. And if you do that, you support me directly. It would help me a lot. And I would really appreciate if you could take a few minutes to do that and support the channel here. Either way, I hope that you guys had a good day today and see you guys soon on the channel here with more esports coverage on Color TV. Bye-bye.